Hello and welcome to another episode of today's GK. Let's begin with previous day's practice question. Question was the India government mint Hyderabad was established in which of the following years? 1802, 1803, 1801 or 1813? The correct answer is option B, 1803. Recently, the 120th anniversary of India government mint Hyderabad has been celebrated in Hyderabad with commemorative souvenir coins. These souvenir coins were crafted of silver and copper serve as a tribute to the rich legacy and contributions of the India government mint in the field of coinage and minting. The India government mint Hyderabad is one of the four mints in India. The mint was originally established in 1803 AD as the royal mint to serve as the mint for the Nizam of Hyderabad. The mint produced Indian coins in the name of Emperor of India. Initially, the mint was situated at Sultan Sahi in Moghalpura sub-urb of the Hyderabad city. Therefore, option B is the correct answer. Now, let's begin today's session. First question is, recently seen in the news, the UNESCO World Heritage Site, Shevin de Huantar is located in which of the following countries? Chile, Argentina, Peru or Brazil? The correct answer is option C, Peru. Recently, the archaeologists working in Peru have uncovered a 3,000-year-old sealed corridor dubbed the Condor's Passageway that likely leads to other chambers inside what was once a massive temple complex pertaining to the ancient Shevin culture. It is located around 190 miles, that is 306 km northeast of Lima, the Shevin de Huantar archaeological site. It is among the culture's most important centers thriving from around 1500 to 550 BC. The Shevin are well known for their advanced art, often featuring depictions of birds and felines. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Arm UNESCO declared Shevin de Huantar a World Heritage Site in 1985. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Next question is, recently the Atlantic Manhattan was seen in the news over the concerns of overfishing. What is its IUCN status? Least concern, vulnerable, endangered or critically endangered? The correct answer is option A, least concern. Recently, the researchers said that overfishing of the Atlantic Manhattan are at the root of the declining reproductive rates of ospreys or bird at Mobjack Bay, an inlet at the southern end of the Chesapeake Bay. It is a commercially important Atlantic Ocean fish, also known as fatback, bunker poggy. They are found in coastal and estuarine waters from Nova Scotia to northern Florida. They are filter feeders primarily consuming phytoplankton and zooplankton in water column. They are a major source of omega-3 fatty acids, so they are also used to develop human and animal supplements. The IUCN status of Atlantic Manhattan is least concern. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Next question is consider the following statements regarding non-fungible tokens or NFTs. 1. The NFT transactions are recorded on blockchains. 2. They can be traded and exchanged for money, cryptocurrencies or other NFTs. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2 or neither 1 nor 2. The correct answer is option C, both 1 and 2. Recently, Google said it will allow developers to offer games on the Play Store where players can buy, sell and earn tokenized digital assets like non-fungible tokens. The NFTs are unique cryptographic tokens that exist on a blockchain and cannot be replicated. They can represent digital or real-world items like artwork, photograph, song, video, real estate, individuals' identities, property rights and more. The NFT transactions are recorded on blockchains, which is a digital public ledger with most NFTs being a part of the Ethereum blockchain. Hence, statement 1 is correct. The NFTs can be traded and exchanged for money, cryptocurrencies or other NFTs. It all depends on the value the market and owners have placed on them. Hence, statement 2 is correct. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Next question is, recently the intercontinental ballistic missile Hua Song 18 was launched by which of the following? China, Japan, South Korea or North Korea? The correct answer is option D, North Korea. North Korea recently tested its latest Hua Song 18 intercontinental ballistic missile. It is a type of solid fuel ICBM developed by North Korea. It is North Korea's first ICBM to use solid fuel which allows for faster launches. A ballistic missile is a rocket-propelled self-guided strategic weapon system that follows a ballistic trajectory to deliver a payload from its launch site to a predetermined target. 
An ICBM is a long range greater than 5,500 km or 3,500 miles ballistic missile typically designed for nuclear weapons delivery that is delivering one or more nuclear warheads. Therefore, option D is the correct answer. Next question is recently launched. The Antibiotic Stewardship Program is an initiative of which of the following? Ministry of Rural Development, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment or Niti Aayog. The correct answer is option B, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Recently, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has launched the Antibiotic Stewardship Program or AMSP on a pilot project basis. The antimicrobial resistance occurs when bacteria, viruses, fungi and parasites change over time and no longer respond to medicines making infections harder to treat and increasing the risk of disease spread, severe illness and death. When microorganisms become resistant to antimicrobials, standard treatments are often ineffective and in some cases, no drugs provide effective therapy. Consequently, treatments fail. Every time we use antimicrobials in people, animals and plants, germs have a chance to acquire the ability to tolerate the treatments by becoming resistant, making the drugs less effective over time. Therefore, option B is the correct answer. Next question is Namda art was recently seen in the news. It is associated with which of the following states or union territories? Odisha, Rajasthan, Chandigarh or Jammu and Kashmir? The correct answer is option D, Jammu and Kashmir. Recently, the Union Minister of State for Skill Development and Entrepreneurship and Electronics and IT has flagged off the first batch of Namda art products for export to the United Kingdom. The art of producing Namda is a centuries-old traditional craft that has been handed down through the generations in the Jammu and Kashmir region. Namda craft is a rug made of sheep wool through felting technique instead of normal weaving process. Due to low availability of raw material, lack of skilled manpower and marketing techniques, the export of this craft has declined almost 100% between 1998 and 2008. The Namda project is an industry-based training program with beneficiaries involved in Namda Crafts production who will contribute towards preserving and reviving the rich heritage associated with Namda Craft in Kashmir. Therefore, option D is the correct answer. Next question is consider the following statements regarding BIMSTEC. One BIMSTEC was established in 1997 with the signing of the Bangkok Declaration. Two, India, Bhutan and Bangladesh were some of the founding members of BIMSTEC. 3. The BIMSTEC Charter was signed and adopted during the 5th BIMSTEC Summit in the year 2022. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none? The correct answer is option B, only two. Recently, the first ever Foreign Minister's meeting of the Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multisectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation was in news. BIMSTEC is a regional organization that was established in 1997 with the signing of the Bangkok Declaration. Hence, statement 1 is correct. In 1997, representatives of the governments of Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka and Thailand came together in Bangkok and signed the declaration on the establishment of the Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, Thailand economic cooperation. And Bhutan and Nepal became member of BIMSTEC in February 2004. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. The BIMSTEC charter was signed and adopted during the 5th BIMSTEC summit held in virtual format in Colombo, Sri Lanka on 30 March 2022. Hence, statement 3 is correct, therefore option B is the correct answer. Next question is with reference to National Tiger Conservation Authority, consider the following statements. 1. The NTCA has been constituted by the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. 2. It is a statutory body under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Which of the statement or statements given above is or are correct? 1. Only 2. Only both 1 and 2 or neither 1 nor 2. The correct answer is option C, both 1 and 2. Recently, NTCA was seen in news for conducting the preliminary analysis of the death of the cheetahs at Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh. The NTCA has been constituted under Section 38L1 of Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Hence, Statement 1 is correct. The NTCA is a statutory body under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Hence, Statement 2 is also correct. NTCA is the apex body entrusted with the implementation of Project Cheetah and has been fulfilling its mandate within the ambit of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 for strengthening tiger conservation in the country. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Next question is exercise nomadic elephant is sometimes seen in the news. It is related with India-France military exercise, the Indian Army and the Indian Air Force joint exercise, India-USA air exercise or India-Mongolia joint military exercise. 
the correct answer is option D, India-Mongolia joint military exercise. Recently, India-Mongolia joint military exercise Nomadic Elephant 2023 was in news. The exercise is scheduled to be conducted at Ulan Batar, Mongolia from 17 to 31st July 2023. Exercise Nomadic Elephant is an annual training event with Mongolia which is conducted alternatively in Mongolia and India. The last edition was held at Special Forces Training School, Bakloho, in October 2019. Build positive military relations, exchange best practices and develop interoperability, bon homi, camaraderie and friendship between the two armies. The primary theme of the exercise will focus on counter-terrorism operations in mountainous terrain under United Nations mandate. Therefore, option D is the correct answer. Last question is, in the context of Indian biodiversity, what is the IUCN status of Western Hulog Gibbon? or Hulak Hulak, least concern, near threatened, vulnerable or endangered. The correct answer is option D, endangered. Recently at a global event on Gibbons, concerns were raised for conservation status of India's only ape. Gibbons, the smallest and fastest of all apes, live in tropical and subtropical forests in the southeastern part of Asia. The Hulak Gibbon, unique to India's northeast, is one of 20 species of Gibbons on Earth. The northeastern forests support the highest diversity of primates in India, including the only apes found in the country, the western hulog gibbon and the eastern hulog gibbon. The western hulog is listed as endangered in the IUCN red list, while the eastern hulog is listed as vulnerable. And both species populations have been declining due to habitat destruction of various forms and hunting for meat. Populations of western hulog gibbons have declined by almost 90% over the last 30 years and it is now considered. Eastern hulog is listed as vulnerable and both species populations have been declining due to habitat destruction of various forms and hunting for meat. Populations of western hulog gibbons have declined by almost 90% over the last 30 years and it is now considered to be one of the most endangered 25 primate species in the world. Therefore, option D is the correct answer. Now it's time for the practice question. Recently the term aspartame was in the news. It is related to artificial intelligence, satellite, artificial sweetener or genetically modified crop. Send the answer of this question in the comment section. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.